Some time ago, I made a preview video for the Pico Grill 85 and 239. Well, today I'm back out with the 239 because I'm going to use it to cook my lunch. But I have to use it with charcoal. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, let me answer the question you're all probably thinking right away, which is why do I have to use charcoal? Well, believe it or not, we're under a fire ban already here in Nova Scotia, even though it is still April, almost the end of April. It has been dry enough and the weather has been nice enough, or at least without enough rain, that the province considers it unsafe during the day right now to have fires. But I could wait until 7 o'clock if I wanted to to have a fire. I need to have one now or some way of cooking. So where does that leave me? Well, I can use alcohol stoves. I could use a gas butane type of a stove. Or I can use charcoal. And this looks perfect to me for using charcoal in. And I know a lot of places are not permitted to use charcoal. I understand and recognize how fortunate we are because I can still use a stove like this with charcoal. All right, since I made the original review video, I have uh, come up with a couple of things. Now, by the way, I'm not going to be going over all the specifications or everything else that goes with this stove, but I will link the original video back on the end of this one and in the video description underneath if you're interested in that information. So uh, back at that point, one of the things I pointed out is that there is no ash pan on the bottom of this stove, so there is a risk of hot coals falling through or a lot of heat being transferred through the bottom of the stove so you have to make sure you're on a fire safe surface don't use this directly on the duff of the forest floor alternatively you can put something underneath that you know to be fire safe well i did exactly that i went home and made one for myself out of aluminum flashing. So this is a piece of aluminum flashing that I cut that will fit inside of that envelope that the stove comes with and sit underneath the stove giving me a lot more protection. Very lightweight, very easy to make. However, the owner of Pico Grill sent me the one that he offers as an accessory, which is stainless steel, smaller, yes, but it's also designed to work with the Pico Grill 85 as well as the 239. So this will provide me protection underneath the stove and uh, just to give me that more bit more insurance that I'm not going to have an issue. Now, there's a couple other things with the original setup for the stove this uh, in order to support a pot on top as you can see this is a pretty big stove and you'd have to have a pretty good sized pot if you want to span that and have it rest securely on top so what pico grill sent was this bar which is a stainless steel bar bent over on either end and that's intended to sit across the top and it does two things. It acts as a structural support for the top of the stove, but also spans the opening. So now I can sit a pot on top quite securely without worrying about it falling through. And that's especially important if you've got a pot that is smaller than the diameter of the stove. Um, it works, it does work. I wouldn't use the stove with extremely small pots, but you could, you know, I have a kettle here today, a GSI Kettleist that I'm gonna be using on top of this stove for my coffee after the meal, but it's it does work. However, if you're interested, Pico Grill does offer another accessory, and that is a set of cross stands or crossbars that can be purchased to be placed on top of the stove. Very lightweight, still stainless steel, skeletonized as you can see, with slots on the ends. And those slots will match up with holes two on each side that span the stove. This will provide the stove with a little bit more structural rigidity. Let me set this on find all four holes or spots for it. All right, there we go, okay. So now you can see I have a, a stronger stove on top in terms of, you know, it provides more support, but also pot support that is quite a bit up off of the top of the stove. And if you recall from that original video, this can put out a lot of heat. So it's nice to be able to have that little bit more height off of the fire and allow for more airflow so that you can better use the airflow of the stove. All right, so those are the updates that I have to go along with the stove. So the only thing left to do is set it up in my fire pit that I know is a fire safe surface, get it loaded with charcoal and get it on so I can cook my lunch. So getting the Pico Grill 239 started with charcoal is a very simple process. All I really have to do is get something, some type of a flame going in the bottom. In this case, I'm going to be using this wood wool fire starter, which lights up pretty easy. I'll place that down inside. Uh, the only trick I've learned is that don't smother it when you go to put it in. So the first couple of pieces of charcoal I like to place rather than just throw in to give it a little bit of a uh, 
room for the rest of the charcoal to go on. Here's another good big one. And that should be enough right there. I'll wait a second or two to make sure that my wood wool is well uh, ignited and then I'll start adding more charcoal and then I've got to put the bar back on and uh, once it's up to speed you'll be surprised of just how much heat this can put, uh, put out. All right, start dropping in a few more. This will hold a lot of charcoal, so this is going to be a big, you know, it's, a, it's quite a good size, so, shall I say. Now, um, I don't have a grill with me, but I could just as easily have bought out a grill that would have spanned the surface, and then I could use this to grill up some hamburgers or hot dogs or anything else. I've got some really cool things coming up for recipes that I want to do over a grill. But today it's going to be a simple stir fry in my frying pan and uh, uh, it, that video will come out separately from this and if you're interested it's going to be bacon and cabbage fried up in a fry pan. I know how simple does that uh, sound but uh, boy is that ever tasty. Honestly very tasty. So yeah okay let's just get this going. What I'll do as I get this brought up to heat is I'll bring it back so you can just see how much is being produced by this stove. And if you don't think charcoal puts out a lot of heat, look at that. Man, I'm actually a little concerned there may be too much heat when I go to cook my lunch. Look at that, as soon as I put my fry pan on top, you can see the heat being transferred through. So I'm gonna to have to keep this bacon moving because it may actually be more heat than I want or need for this. So the point was uh, to cook the bacon first to give the cabbage something to cook in inside of the fat. Oh, that's a lot in this plan. So I am hoping this will fry down some. So I haven't shown too much of the cooking process. As I mentioned, that's going to come out under another video, but here's what my lunch looks like at this point. It's my fried cabbage and bacon. There's a little bit of crispiness, which is actually kind of intended. It's not a, it's not burnt. It's just crispy, right? Gives an indication of just how much heat this stove is putting out with the charcoal. Let's just see. Look at that. That's the same load of charcoal. It's a little bit later and it's still putting out more heat than than I need for this process. I could be grilling a whole bunch of steaks on top of this one right after the other. Actually, pretty big steaks too, because this is quite a big stove. I'm gonna do that at some point, bring this back out, I need to do hamburgers or steaks or pork chops or chicken or something. I just need to get a grill that's big enough to fit over the top. All right, folks, I have enough heat left in this stove that I could put a pot of water on for coffee, which I think is something I'm probably gonna do. But what I'll have to do now is finish off my lunch, eat my lunch, and then once the stove has cooled off, I'll come back for a few final comments. All right, there we go. It was just a simple demonstration of how you can use your Pico Grill 239 with charcoal. That put out a lot of heat. I mean, a lot of heat. As you can see, it was a challenge to keep from burning my lunch. Still folds down nice and flat, just the way it's supposed to. Uh, just another way of using this. Um, again, I recommend using something underneath it because of the heat transfer through to the ground. No coals came out of the bottom of this, but then again, I was in a fire safe uh, spot anyway, so I wasn't too concerned about it. Yeah, that's all I wanted to show you is how you can use this. This will likely come out with me again when we're still under a fire ban, and hopefully not too much longer. And I'll bring a grill and I'll grill up some sausages or, or steaks or hamburgers or something on it for sure. Okay, if you have any questions, questions about this stove or any of my other stoves about using charcoal, uh, please put all those comments in the, in the uh, comment section below, the questions in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less follow because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.